Problem number one. What is the value of 8 times 4 plus 2 minus 8 times 4 times 2? So as always in these questions, you have that uh, order of operations which can be uh, abbreviated BEDMA. So brackets, exponents, division, multiplication, addition, subtraction. So let's do that. So we have 8 times 4 plus 2, and then we have 8 plus 4 times 2. So the multiplication goes first, so 32 plus 2. In this one, the multiplication would go first, so it would be 8 plus uh, 8. And then this is 34, and this is 16, and 34 minus 16 is 18, so the answer would be D. A square piece of paper is folded twice onto four equal quarters, as shown below. Then cut along the dashed line. When unfolded, the paper will match which of the following figures. In these kinds of questions, what I always say is just get a piece of paper and just do it manually. Fold it and then cut off this piece and open it back up. Because I don't know about you guys, but I'm not really good at 3D in my mind. I don't have a 3D mind. So I got to do it um, you know, manually. And when you do it manually, you will find that it looks like E. Problem number three, wind chill is a measure of how cold people feel when exposed to wind outside. A good estimate for wind chill can be found using the calculation wind chill is equal to air temperature minus 0.7 times wind speed, where temperature is measured in Fahrenheit, wind speed in miles per hour. Suppose that the temperature is 36, wind speed is 18, which of the following is closest to the wind chill? Okay, so let's use this formula. Wind chill is air temperature, so that's going to be 36 minus 0.7 times the wind speed, which is 18, and I think that's it. So that's going to be, what, 12.6, and then that would be 23.4. So that is, they're saying, oh, closest to, okay, I got it. So just approximating, and that would be B. The numbers from 1 to 49 are arranged in a spiral pattern on a square grid beginning at the center. The first few numbers have been entered into the grid below. Consider the four numbers that will appear in the shaded squares on the same diagonal as number 7. How many of these four numbers are prime? All right, so we just got to fill these in, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and so on, right? Going in this, uh, what is it, in this spiral, whatever. Now, obviously, you guys can do that. So I'll just put in the shaded ones. That's going to be 19. That's going to be 23. That's 39 and this one ends up being 47 now they're saying of those four numbers that entered into the shaded boxes which one are prime well 19 is a prime number 23 is a prime number 39 is not a prime number because it's divisible by 3 47 is so three of those are primes and therefore number four the answer would be D A lake contains 250 trout along with a variety of other fish. Which, when a marine biologist catches and releases a sample of 180 fish from the lake, 30 are identified as trout. Assume that the ratio of trout to the total number of fish is the same in both the sample and the lake. How many fish are there in the lake? Okay. So this is one of those straightforward ratio questions. 250 over X is what I'll denote the quantity of the other fish. Is the same as this uh, 30 over 150, right? Because a sample of 180, of which 30 were trout, so that means the other 150 are the other fish. Okay, so this is my uh, algebra. When I cross multiply, uh, this can be reduced to 3 over 15, so make our life a little easier. And the 15 times 250 is uh, 3750. So then x is 1250. Now be careful. x represents what? Other fish. What they're asking for is how many fish are there in the lake? So what they're referring to is total number of fish, which they should have put total, right? But they didn't. So total would be this 1250, which is the other fish. And then the 250, uh, which is the trout, according to that first sentence right there. So that's, this total is what they're asking for. And that total, of course, is 1500. And therefore, number five would be B.
The digits 2, 0, 2, 3 are placed in the expression below, one digit per box. What is the maximum possible value of this expression? All right, so you just got to fiddle around, you know. Uh, so when I fiddled around, first thing I did was, let's see, I got 2 to the power of 0 times 2 to the power of 3. What does that give me? This will be 1 times 8, which is 8, okay? Um, let's see if I can get anything bigger than that. I probably can. Uh, then I tried 3 to the power of 2 times 2 to the power of 0. That's 9 times 1. Well, there you go. I got 9. And you'll notice that this is the biggest. You can't get anything bigger than that, no matter how you arrange those four into these boxes. A rectangle with sides parallel to the x and y axis has uh, vertices 15, 3, 16, 5. A line drawn through points 0, 0, and 3, 1. Another line through 0, 10, and 2, 9. How many points on the rectangle lie on at least one of the two lines? So the first thing we have to do, of course, is make uh, an equation of the lines. So the first equation, I'll use those two points 0, 0, and 3, 1 and y is equal to mx plus b. Sub in, if I sub in that guy, I will get that b is equal to 0, and therefore y is equal to mx. If I sub in this one, I will get that uh, when x is 3, m is 1, so therefore m is 1 third. Correct? So therefore my equation is y is equal to 1 third x, and that's the equation of the line that's going through a and b. Yeah. And then what you have to do is figure out if that equation is used, can it uh, result in something in that box or on that box? Yeah, lie on at least one of the two lines. How many points on the rectangle? Yeah, on the rectangle. Ah, okay, so I don't think they're talking about in the rectangle. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Okay, so let's see. Well, there's only four points on the rectangle, right? No, there's many. There's just only four corners. Ah. Okay, well, as long as we find at least one point on the rectangle, uh, this point right here, this guy, that is 15, 5. Well, that would be, that would satisfy that equation. So there you go. So that definitely would be sufficient. So, but that makes me think that this line is kind of like this. You see what I uh, drew there? It will it touch the rectangle but only at that one point so that's there's only one point i'll just put that one there in brackets now we got to figure out the equation for the c and d these guys that's 15 3 and uh oh actually no sorry that's not 15 3 that's uh this guy 0 10 and 2 9 okay so same story uh you guys can figure out the equation of that line i hope so uh, so that's it's going to be y is equal to minus one half x plus ten. Okay. Now what you have to do is figure out if that's going to allow us to reach that rectangle. Now this point is fifteen three. Will that if you put fifteen in here as an x coordinate, you get minus seven point five, uh, and then we get two point five. So that means you're going to not reach that rectangle. You're actually going to be a little bit below it. You're going to be uh, approximately here. I'm going to do it in red. You're going to here, be here. Now, what about this guy here, right here? That is 16, 3. If you put 16 in here, you get uh, y is equal to minus 8 plus 10, which is 2. So that's actually going to be here. So that makes me think that it's going to be something like this where... You see, it, it misses the rectangle. So that results in zero uh, points on the rectangle. So the only one is that one, and therefore the answer would be B for number 7. Lola, Lolo, Tia, and Tio participated in a ping pong tournament. Each player competed against each of the other three players exactly twice. Shown below are the win-loss records for the players. The number one and zero represent a win or a loss, respectively. For example, Lola won five matches and lost the fourth match. What was Tio's win-loss record? Okay, so I'm going to have to draw this a little bit bigger. One, 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 zero, one, one. Lolo, one, zero, one, 
zero one zero Tia zero one zero one zero zero and then Tio we don't know. Okay. Well this is one of the this is one of those things you call a matching game here because for every one it's gonna match a zero. Um, let me explain what I mean by that. Lola won this game, so Tia lost this game. So my assumption is that that was one game, and the result was that Lola won. That's why she got a one, and Tia lost. That's why Tia got a zero. So we got to match those up. So then this has to happen with something, most likely a game with Tio. Now, if Lola won, that means Tio lost, so I put a zero there. You see what I'm doing there? I'm I'm trying to mix and match. I'm trying to match basically, not mix. Okay, let's try this again. Hopefully this will be straightforward. This one and this zero could represent the same game. Lola won, Lolo lost. So then this and this most likely could represent the same game with Tio won, but Tio lost. So I could put a zero there. See? So let's do this again. This will represent one game, and then this represents one game. I'll put a zero there. These two represent one game. And this and this represent one game. But this time this will be a one. And then this represents one game. That represents one game. That'll be a zero. This represents one game. And this and this represent one game. Well, that would be a one. So zero, 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 one, zero, one. And that is choice A. Malaika is skiing on a mountain. The graph below shows her elevation in meters above the base of the mountain as she skis along a trail. In total, how many seconds does she spend at an elevation between 4 and 7 meters? So we are only interested in 4 and 7 meters. So this is the elevation right here. So here's 4 and here is 7. So we are only interested in that. So it looks like she is there between this point and this point and then between this point and that point and then finally between that and that so the first two looks like between two and four so that's for two seconds and then between six and ten so that's four seconds and then finally looks like between 12 and 14 which is another two seconds so when you add these up you get eight seconds and that would be choice b Harold made a plum pie to take on a picnic. He was able to eat only a quarter of the pie, and he left the rest for his friends. A moose came by and ate one-third of what Harold left behind. After that, a porcupine ate one-third of the moose. What the moose left, and how many of the original pie remained after the porcupine left? Okay, so here we go. So I initially have a pie uh, represented as one. It, you know, that's the whole pie. And then he ate one-quarter of the pie, so that means three quarters is left. Okay, so this is after Harold. After Harold. So after Harold. Okay. Then a moose ate one third of what Harold left behind. So Harold left behind three quarters. So the moose ate one third of what um, Harold left behind. But what is remaining would be two thirds. Right, because the moose ate one third of what's left behind, so what's remaining is two thirds of what Harold left, and that's three quarters. And of course, this is going to be a multiplication. Then finally, you have the porcupine, and the porcupine ate one third of what's left, so what's remaining is two thirds of what was left after the moose, which is two thirds times three quarters. So that's how you do this question. And then, of course, i got to calculate this. So this is what uh, uh, 4 over 12, which is uh, 1 third. Yeah, 1 third. So if it's 1 third, then that is uh, choice D.